Praise the Lord. The heat of the sun is taking your voice away. I said, Praise the Lord. What a wonderful time we have and a chance we have to worship the Lord. Maybe you've never done this, so they're open. The church, the early church, Acts of the Apostles, on the day of Pentecost, 3,000 were born again, converted. And he continued in the apostles' doctrine, in fellowship, and in prayers. They didn't have a church building. And many of the times, the worship outside, like you are doing today, come back to our educational system in education. Students who have the mind to learn. Sometimes they don't have school buildings. I know you have school buildings now, especially in the capital city, but in many places under the tree and in the sun, but the sun did not matter to them. What mattered to them? They wanted education. And many of them now are working in air-conditioned offices. And as you come today, I envy you that you can be there in the sun worshiping today. I didn't hear your amen. amen. Maybe that's the cross for today that the disciple has to carry. And then the disciple will not say, Pastor, hurry up, hurry up. Why are you hurrying up? You want to drop your cross? Bear your cross with a smile. Say, I'll bear my cross with a smile. And I'm telling you, you will wear a crown. Yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus, yeah. we come to you today. We want to learn. We want to live. We want to listen so that by your grace and your strength, we become leaders in Jesus' name. Yeah. We're asking, Lord, that today, the revelation of your word will come to everyone and you make disciples out of every one of us in jesus name Amen. confirm it lord in jesus mighty name we pray amen. that's a cloudy amen give me a sunny amen, amen. you are blessed already you can sit down i'm coming to mark chapter 8 verse 34 Mark chapter 8 verse 34 And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also he said unto them whosoever will come after me let him deny himself take up his cross and follow me today we come to redemption service and a discipleship service. I'm talking to you on precious discipleship after experiencing Christ's gracious redemption. Redemption from the Redeemer, salvation from the Savior, healing from the healer. Deliverance from the deliverer. And then, after having that redemption, we now start a journey of discipleship. Precious discipleship after experiencing Christ's gracious redemption. As we talk about this, you see that verse I read to you. It says, and when he had called the people unto him. He called the people not unto tradition, not unto religion, not unto tribal ideas. He called the people unto himself with his disciples. By the way, that word disciple comes from a Greek word that means learner. 
the disciple is a learner. Number one, he learns to live by what he had learned. If you're a disciple, you're saved, you're redeemed, and then you're brought unto himself, and you begin to learn, and you learn to live everything you hear from him. Everything you learn from him, you live by that. You learn also to lead. But before you lead, you, lead, you learn before leading. You want to lead other people, your eyesight is dim, and then you're almost blind. You go to the Redeemer, it touches your eyesight, and he opens your eyes now. You can see, first of all, you learn before you lead. Not to lead that, to lead. There are many people, they don't understand leadership. You lead self before you lead others. That's how Christ did it. He showed them the example. They were learners. And because they were learners, they now led a better life, a good life, a gracious life. And because they had that leadership of self, they knew when to deny self, they knew when to determine in themselves. They said the way to go, walk therein. They led self before they led others. Are you somebody there? You're trying to lead other people, guide other people, control other people, direct other people, but your life is not well directed yet. You learn to lead self before you lead others. You learn when you come to Christ, there are things you have never heard, you will hear. The things you never knew, you will know. You learn the new to lose the old, the old life, the old habit, the old lifestyle. You lose that. You give that away because you learn the new to lose the old. That's a disciple. A disciple who remains in the kindergarten of knowledge, all through his life, all through a life, a disciple who remains in the basics and doesn't grow, that's not a good disciple. A disciple is the one he doesn't miss school. You know, there are students, pupils, they are afraid of learning. They don't, they don't want to hear anything new. And they don't want to hear anything from that difficult subject. So, they are only with students. A disciple of Christ is the one that learns daily. A disciple of Christ learns daily. And he leans on him, the teacher, daily. He will tell you things. He reveals things to you. He will teach and instruct you in things by yourself. You couldn't in any way obey, but you learn daily so that you lean on him daily. Actually, it's what we learn that lifts us up. What we learn at school lifts us up in employment. What we learn from Christ lifts us up in Christianity. We learn to be lifted. That's a disciple. That's why those disciples became apostles. They learned, and because of what they learned, they were lifted. Lifting up is about to come for you in your life your ministry, Amen. in your family, Amen. in your profession, Amen. in your community, Amen. you learn so as to be littered. You learn more so that 
you can earn more. You see the people who learned and they finished high school, secondary school. After that, they don't read any book. After that, they don't search for anything. They never learn more. All, only the old knowledge they had. They have been out of school for 10 years now. For those 10 years, they have learned nothing. And they never earn more. If you're going to earn more honor, you're going to earn more respect. You're going to earn more glory. You're going to earn the recognition of heaven. You learn more and learn more and learn more. And that is why we're here today. You will learn. I will learn. You learn more so that you can earn more. Today, precious discipleship after experiencing Christ's gracious redemption. We're looking at three points here. Number one, the purposeful death and resurrection of our costly redemption. You might be talking about costly discipleship, but actually it's the redemption that is costly. It's the redemption, the death of Christ on the cross of Calvary. It's the redemption, what he suffered and what he bore for us. That's the costly thing. That is purposeful death and resurrection for our costly redemption. Number two, the proper decision and response to his consummate redemption. Consummate redemption. There's redemption now. There's redemption all the way through. And then on the final day, when you have your last breath, and you close your eyes, and you open your eyes to the other side, consummate the climax of the benefit of redemption for you. The proper decision and response to his consummate redemption. Number three, final, the prioritized discipleship. The prioritized discipleship. You understand? A disciple is just to follow. Adam and Eve followed Satan. They lost the privilege of following the Lord. They lost the image of God. Absalom. Followed self, he lost his life prematurely. Judas Iscariot followed 30 pieces of silver, and then he ended up in perdition. But what we follow, who we follow, how we follow, when we follow, determines our destiny, the prioritized discipleship and relationship for his compassionate redemption. Let's come to number one. Number one is the purposeful death and resurrection of our costly redemption. The Lord died and the Lord was buried and he rose again for one thing for our redemption. The death and the resurrection for our costly redemption. First Corinthians chapter 15. And I'm reading from verse 3. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. Look up here. I delivered. What I received. If you never receive anything, you have nothing to deliver. If you have not received, you have nothing to deliver. The society is waiting for you to deliver, to deliver life, deliver abundant life, deliver joy, deliver happiness, and deliver the hope. For living, but you must receive first the gospel, the glad news, the redemption, 
can only be given by the people who have received. The knowledge of salvation can only be given by those who have received. And the knowledge of upright living, righteous living, holy living, can only be delivered to other people by those who have received. Show me a man, show me a woman who is gloomy and sad and despondent. And then he goes to a congregation, he goes to society, he says, I want to deliver some joy to you. They say, no, you don't, you can't do that. You have to receive the joy before you can deliver the joy. I want to show you the way of victory. No, you cannot. You have to receive the victory before you can deliver the victory. And the reason why the Lord has redeemed us is so that we'll receive. Any receiver there today? Praise the Lord. The Lord will fill your basket to overflowing. You receive salvation. You receive redemption. You receive revelation before you can deliver whatever it is you want to deliver. And it says, for I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. How? That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. That's redemption. Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. Saul did not know that before. Paul did not know that before. Actually, he thought it was blasphemy for somebody to say, Christ died for you, to be your substitute, to be the final sacrifice, and to be your savior. But his life turned around. I'm happy for you. Your life will turn around. Yeah. You don't have to know and study Genesis to Revelation before your life turns around. Just know that Christ died for your sins. And then you put all your sins on Christ. And now you are free. Yeah. Somebody there. I said now you are free. Yeah. And because of that, the death of Christ... And his resurrection, new life comes to you, power comes to you, authority, anointing comes to you, and your life will never be the same again. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Look at verse 4, in verse 4, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures did you see that according to the scriptures verse 3 according to the scriptures verse 4 salvation according to the scriptures sanctification according to the scriptures Baptism in the Holy Ghost according to the scriptures. Healing according to the scriptures. Redemption according to the scriptures. Dream according to scriptures you cannot hold on to a dream and abandon the scriptures vision according to the scriptures you cannot hold vision and then abandon the scripture everything you do as a disciple as a learner everything you've got as a disciple as a learner everything you experience as a disciple as a learner according to to the scriptures and the Lord fulfill this ultimate and this full redemption in every one of our lives in Jesus name yeah. okay now in your life yeah. in your family yeah. in your ministry yeah. the Lord fulfill his will in your life completely in Jesus name yeah. we're looking at I say Chapter 53, verse 4. Surely. Somebody help me there. Shout the word surely. surely. I don't wanted you to help me so that your voice will be higher than my voice. You are in your thousands. Help me shout surely. Surely, surely he has borne our griefs. 
somebody assists you and you're heavy and you're heavy leaning and he says uh, what's happening to you oh you say i have a great body i have a great grief that's why my shoulders are bent all the time that's why i'm so for the time i thought christ ball your griefs for you how is it two of you are bearing the same grief that doesn't make sense he has borne my grief i said he has borne my grief i said he has borne my griefs that's the redemption it takes the load of your shoulder it takes the load of your mind it takes the load of your spirit and now because he has borne that you are not bearing it anymore surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows you know if i told you come help me carry that chair out of that place when you carry that chair there you leave an em empty space there that place is now free for another good thing uh, to replace the chair and when god carries all your sorrows away all your sorrows away okay all my sorrows away all my sorrows away that's redemption somebody said I came to the crusade and I gave my life to the Lord and then I was redeemed and it still carries on sorrow I'm in the valley I'm on the mountain I don't understand people everybody is my enemy even the sky is my enemy the rain my enemy the sunshine my enemy my relatives my enemy hey wait a minute redemption means it carries all your sorrows away yeah. why why do you never smile or you're always frowning or you're always angry at everybody or you a uh, kind of shadow fighting you know, and shadow boxing uh, boxing everyone around the man is confused that woman is confused a lot of sorrows if it has not been taken away today all your sorrows are taken away yeah. He carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. And then he says in verse 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions. A transgression normally will bring wounds into your life, ache into your life. But Jesus said, you're not strong enough to bear all that wound, I'll bear it for you. I'll bear it for you. Amen. Internal wounds, they call it ulcer. Internal wounds, they call it cancer. Internal wounds, they call it breathlessness, cannot breathe well. Internal wounds, he was wounded for a transgression. Amen. He was raised for iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And you will tell me and you will tell me what the stripes were healed were healed i see a father coming out and he has the wife beside him and then he has the children and he's talking for the whole family we are healed that doesn't mean the father only you your wife you your children Amen. we we Amen. we Amen. we're healed Amen. am i healthy Amen. no i'm asking for myself am i healthy Amen. i'm your father now you must be healthy Amen. am i happy Amen. i'm your father now you must be happy Amen. am i strong you must be strong yeah. we collectively it's collective redemption that goes on to everyone thank god what he gave up at calvary he has given to you yeah. he has given to me yeah. i possess i receive yeah. and it's what i receive i now declare unto you yeah. from this day 
this sunny day, this sunshine day, and this supernatural day, you'll never be the same again. You'll see why he died, why he rose. Point number two now. Point number two, the proper decision and response to his consummate redemption. Proper decision and response to his consummate redemption. Let's come back to Mark chapter 8, reading from verse 34. It says, when he had called the people, he called, he called, and everyone that came, he didn't say, you go back, I didn't put you as part of the people I call, you go back, the sins are too many, I can't call you to myself, that's why I save you, for sinners to come. For dejected people to come. For unfortunate people to come. He has called you. Amen. I said he has called you. Amen. Unto himself. There's salvation there. Unto himself. There's joy there. Unto himself. There's release there. Unto himself. And as you answer the call. And you abide. And you stay with him. You will never, never remain the same again. Amen. Demon is dying Amen. down. Amen. And when he had called the people unto him, with his disciples also. Disciple. Disciple. Who is that? A disciple is a follower. A disciple is a follower. The Lord calls us, and he knows we came with a lot of burden, a lot of guilt, a lot of condemnation. And then he calls us, so, so forgive us. Forgiven, then you follow. You drop your guilt, you drop your condemnation. He wants you to be a disciple, a follower. You're forgiven, and you follow free from the past to follow the prince the past history of our lives have been destroyed defiled had been stained by a lot of things we cannot even begin to talk about publicly but the lord said leave all that alone he'll forgive your past I didn't hear your amen. amen. And then he sets you free amen. from the past to follow the Prince of Life and the Prince of Peace and the power that will never fail in your life. Amen. And then you follow the new to forsake the old. You know, if you are having... The old life still trailing you, attached to you, and linked up with you. You're not following Christ. When you follow, you forsake the old, and then you follow the new. You, for, you forsake the empty life. Before you know Christ, your life is empty and when you hear somebody shout and blow his own trumpet empty barrels make the most noise your life was empty and the lord is asking you to be a disciple forsake the empty and follow is emancipation and follow is fullness you follow by faith you follow into fullness you follow by grace you follow into godliness and glory 
You follow daily and you find destiny. That's a disciple. It's a follower. And he's following the Lord step by step. Day after day. One event after the other following the Lord. And if you have become a disciple by the redemption that has taken place during this week and even today, you will now follow into your destiny. Amen. Destiny Amen. waiting for you. Amen. Power waiting for you. Yeah. And a glorious end waiting for you in Jesus' name. Yeah. That's how to be a disciple, the proper decision and response to consummate redemption. We're looking at Matthew chapter 10, reading from verse 37. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. When I was very young, my father loved me. I loved him. I thought I heard you say your father used to beat you. Yes, he beat me love. He didn't want me to go astray. He loved me. And he loved me very much. And I wanted to be like him completely. My father said, no, no. I didn't go to university. Don't follow me there. Go to university. I didn't study mathematics. Don't follow me there. Study mathematics. I didn't do well. I didn't succeed. Only this menial job I had. Don't follow me there. Love something higher than myself. And I chose to love that higher thing more than my father, more than my mother. I, I loved my mother. I used to look at her and look at the resemblance between her and myself. But my mother, good mother, gracious mother, loving mother, did not have the education I now have. And that dear mommy said, there's a limit to what you follow in the natural. Now, I want you to look up and follow a higher prince, a higher lord, a higher king. And the Lord is saying, if you don't love him more than your father, you'll never go beyond where your father has got you. If you don't love him more than your mother, you'll never go beyond what your mother achieved in life. I think, uh, you know, my father, my mother must be looking at what is happening to their boy now here on earth. And they must be happy he didn't follow us, he followed the Lord. You will follow the Lord. Amen. I said you will follow the Lord. Amen. We love our father, but our things we cannot copy from uh, a father. We love a mother. There are some things we cannot copy from a mother. And then it says, He that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Our sons, they are angels in the home. When I say angels, we cherish them, we love them. We appreciate them. But sons do not know any better. They will do things that, you see, I love them so much, I cannot obey the scriptures and discipline them. Your daughter, you love her so much, she's a replica of the mother, your wife. And you transfer that love for your wife to her. A good lady, a gentle lady, a nice, beautiful lady. But you're looking at the future of that daughter. And when she does something that natural love will say, love her. 
forget about what she has done you love the lord and you love the scriptures more than that natural love and it is that greater love higher love that makes you to obey the scriptures despite what she wants it's not saying don't love her and leave her behind go to heaven alone no love her love him and whatever you can do in the love of God to make sure that if your dad is still alive, mom is still alive, and son is still alive, and daughter is still alive, whatever you will do, that they will get to that heaven with you, you will do. Yeah. I said you will do. Yeah. But you know, our children, they are limited in knowledge. Sometimes your child will say, Daddy, you don't love me. Why do you withhold this from me? You say, My son, my daughter. That's your interpretation. Because you are young, you don't understand. Like Christ said unto Peter, What I do now, you won't understand. But hereafter, you'll understand and you'll know that I do everything I do because of the love I have for you would you go out of this place making up your mind taking a decision that you love God with all your heart all your soul all your mind love Christ who died for you and love the Holy Spirit and love the scriptures and love everything divine everything supernatural more than father more than mother more than son more than daughter now what we think about a relationship on earth son daughter father mother all the other people, whoever they are, will kill behind daddy, mommy, son, daughter. And if daddy and mommy are in the front of the queue in your life, if son and daughter are in front of the queue in your life, and you love God above father in front of the queue, above mother in front of the queue above son in front of the queue above daughter in front of the queue all the other people queuing up behind them you love the lord above everyone on earth can i hear a good amen yeah. there's nobody in your life there's no relationship in your life there's no attached attachment to your life and there is no affiliation with your life that shall take the place of Christ he died for you he shed his blood for you he tasted the cup of indignation and the death of judgment for you because of what he has done for you which no man no woman, no boy, no girl, no husband, no wife can do for you. You lift up Christ above everyone on earth. He that loveth father or mother more than me. Unthinkable, unthinkable, unthinkable. More than me, the one who went to the cross. The one who died a shameful death. The one who died a painful death. The one who died to make you live. The one who surrendered his life that you may have life and have it in abundance. It's unthinkable you will put him down and put any other person up. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me and he that loveth son or daughter more than me 
is not worthy of me. That brings you to a decision. A decision to say, God will be number one in my life. Give me a good amen. amen. A decision that says, Christ, my Savior, at any time, all through my days, will be number one in your life. A decision that says, I respond to the love of Christ. He died for me. I would live for him. He took bad things away from me. And I would live by his grace and by his goodness. The Lord fulfill that in your life in Jesus' name. Look at Philippians chapter 3, verse 7. Philippians chapter 3, verse 7. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. There was a big ocean liner ship moving from one place to the other. This man in the ship had gone to Australia and he had amassed great wealth. All that wealth he turned to gold, literal gold. And he made a belt and strapped the gold around himself, very heavy. And then he was in that ship, ocean liner, and then it capsized. And many people lost their lives. But he knew how to swim. A daughter there, a girl there, a teenager had lost the mother. And then she looked at that man and, that, and he said, Sir, save my life. And the man knew. The weight of the gold was so much already that to even swim to shore will be a challenge. And then look at these cheery eyes of the teenage girl that said, Sir, my mother is gone. Daddy, gone. All drowned. You are the only one I'm looking up to. Save my life. That rich man with the gold around him thought about it. I cannot keep this gold and save this girl. I cannot take on this girl with the gold. So he unstrapped and threw the gold into the ocean. Then he was lighter and he took up that girl at his back and he tried tried swimming, tried swimming, and he got to the shore, exhausted, in delirium. He didn't know where he was, unconscious. And that girl stayed there. The following day, the man came into consciousness, and the girl looked at him and said, you saved my life. I should have died. Whatever was important to me, I gave up. Because you gave up what was important to you. Whatever I cherished as a teenager, wanting this, wanting that, I would have died. I gave up everything. Now direct me and lead me. You are my savior. You are the one that saved my life. And now I put my life in your hand. You can direct me. That's what Jesus did. He was sinless. He was perfect. He was spotless. He was holy. He was righteous. He was pure. He was heavenly minded. And then looking at you, drowning in the sea of sinfulness, knew that except he did something, you'll be forever lost. And he gave up his glory, his honor, and he gave up his riches, and then he stooped down 
and he picked you up and now you are alive are the living people there yeah. i said now you are alive yeah. that's what paul realized he said an injurious person a blasphemer a castaway man a man too bad to be saved now peter could not go to paul james could not go to paul all the people that were scattered about they couldn't go to paul that man was a ferocious lion or kill and destroy anybody that came to him and jesus led his throne in heaven and he came down to earth on the dusty road to Damascus and mentioned his name Saul. Saul, why? What you are doing? Why? Where you are going? Why? All this energy you are spending to destroy people? Why? And the things I've done? Why? When I was on earth, I healed people. Even some of your relatives will tell you, I healed them. Why? And the man answered and said, I'm sorry. I couldn't tell you why. There was something inside me that was just destructive. What will I do now? Go to Damascus. It will be shown you what you will do. He went there. And God also sent Ananias. God was after him to do him good. And Ananias came there and said, Brother Saul, the Lord who appeared to you by the way has sent me, that your eyes might be opened, and that will be filled with the Holy Ghost. The scales in his eyes fell off. He began to see the glories of heaven. And Paul said, that Savior, that Redeemer, that redeemed me like that, what things were gained to me? Those I counted loss for Christ. Think about your life, where you could have been. Think about your life, what evil, what degradation, what shame should have seized your life. But Christ said, no. I love you more than you love yourself. And he came to save you and to redeem you. Won't you join Paul and say, What things were gained to me? Those I counted loss for Christ. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but don't that I may win Christ verse 9 it says and be found in him not having my own righteousness Jewish righteousness which is of the law but that which is through faith the faith of christ the righteousness which is of god by faith i pray will come will line up with paul silas timothy and then as it comes to our turn to confess christ which you will say, our Redeemer, our Savior, our Sanctifier, our Healer, our Deliverer, our Baptizer in the Holy Ghost, our King of Kings, our Provider, is more precious, more glorious, highly lifted up above all on earth. And with Paul and the rest of them, which you will say, what things were gain unto me, those I counted loss for Christ.
and at the end a crown will come upon your head Amen. crown the crown of righteousness the crown of life the crown of eternal joy the crown of eternal happiness will be given to you as you love the Lord above everything above everyone on earth we'll come to point number three point number three the prioritized discipleship and relationship for the compassionate redemption is given us compassionate redemption that he has given unto us we're looking at john chapter 8 and i'm reading from verse 12 john 8 reading from verse 12 then spake jesus again unto them saying i am the light of the world he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life look at verse 31 in verse 31 then said jesus to those jews which believed on him if ye continue in my word then are ye my disciples indeed if ye continue in my word then are ye my disciples indeed who is a disciple a disciple is a servant that owns christ as master he looks at Christ, the Savior. He looks at Christ, the Messiah. He looks at Christ, the Redeemer. And he said, He, from now on, will be the Lord and the Master of my life. A disciple is a servant. He knows, number one, I'm saved. To serve with sincerity. He says, he came and he served me. He gave me the menu from heaven. The life from heaven. Abundant life from heaven. Eternal life from heaven. He has served me in response. In my relationship, I will serve him. Saved to serve with sincerity. Number two, saved by sacrifice for sacrifice. I couldn't be saved without sacrifice. And I will not get to the end of the journey of service without sacrifice. Is sacrifice the greatest of all? You'll have to sacrifice your comfort, luxury, convenience, joy, possession, whatever it takes. I see a sacrifice all to save you. You are saved by sacrifice for sacrifice back in his service. You are saved to seek souls. He himself said, I came to seek and to save them that are lost. And now that you are saved, look up. You fell into a well. You are about drowning. And then a good natured man at the top of the well throw the rope down and he says hold it firm and he pulled you out and 
as you were going to run away from that place, it says, wait, wait, come. He put that rope in your hand. That same rope that saved you. He gives in your hand. It says, there's still other people in that well. What I have done for you, do for them. And throw that rope there and pull them up. He has saved you from drowning in eternal perdition. Now, take that same gospel and throw the rope down you are saved to seek for souls you are saved so that you can be sanctified and be a real saint you are the salt of the earth and if the salt at lost is civil where we shall it be salted it is then for good for nothing but to be thrown down and to be trampled under the feet of men. He has saved you to make your life salty so you can save other people who are getting into corruption. He has saved you to separate you from all sins. And you say, Lord, I thank you. I'm saved. Thank God you are saved. It is so that you'll be separated from your past sins and you'll be saved completely unto the Lord your Savior. Summarize that. You're saved. You're sanctified. You're strengthened in the Spirit. That's what He has done. And I pray that salvation will make you to serve the Lord unreservedly in Jesus' name. Amen. The proper, prioritized discipleship and relationship in His compassionate redemption. Let's come back to Mark chapter 8, reading from verse 34. Mark chapter 8 and we're reading from verse 34 and when he had called the people unto him with his disciples those who are saved by the grace of God and they are saved for godliness and they are saved so that they can be on their way to glory he said unto his disciples whosoever well, come after me. Let him deny himself and take up his cross. There's no cross that will ever be as heavy as the cross that Christ bore for you, that he carried for you. Talk about cross. Whatever we find giving us discomfort, like sometimes, like your day now, they are in the sun, not very pleasant, but then quietly, sincerely, happily, joyfully, undisturbed, will bear that cross. The Lord reward you. Yeah. Then you get back home. Now you are redeemed. You are saved. You are made righteous. And you live a righteous life. And the friends you've been playing pranks with before, they want you to gamble with them again. You put your hands behind you. You look up to heaven. And you say, the man you see here will not gamble anymore. Not with cards. Not with anything. Lotto. Gambling. Will never come into this life again. And those people, ah, they say, holy, holy. They say, pastor, pastor. They say, holy Mary. And then they despise you. That's the cross. You bear your cross with a smile. Give me a good amen. amen. And somebody you love, somebody you respect, somebody you honor, you are the errant person. 
and he says hey come here have you seen you all that all through that who are you i went for a global crusade ah what is that redemption crusade what happened to you there i'm redeemed okay stop that religious talk here is money go and buy that alcohol for me I say with all due respect sir no more alcohol is a poison i love you now more than whatever and i'll not buy poison for you he said am i hearing well you have the mouth you have the audacity you have the boldness to look at me eyeball to eyeball and you say you will not i give you another chance take that money go and buy that beer for me then, sir. Christ is now number one. My Savior is now number one. I will not. I have said yes to the Lord. And I say no to everyone that contradicts Christ in my life. He may get angry. That's the cross. He may withdraw some things away from you. That's the cross. And you're so happy. You are able to bear that injury and that cross for the name of Christ. That's denying yourself. Self wants to be happy. Flesh wants to have pleasure. But now all that is taken away. Okay, you have had a new Lord, a new master. Let him take care of you. We will not take care of you anymore. That's the cross. That cross will not kill you. Yeah. And did you hear this before? What does not kill us makes us stronger. Yeah. You'll be stronger. You'll be higher. Amen. You deny self and then take up your cross and you follow me. And you follow him into the sanctified life. You follow him into the spirit filled life. You follow him into the successful life. And the Lord himself he will take care of you. He will take care of me. He will take care of me. He will not allow me to miss my way until I get up yonder. He will take care of me. Where is the person I'm talking about? He will take care of you. That cross, when it becoming heavier than the grace you have, it will either lessen the weight of the cross or it leaves the cross there and it gives you a greater grace, a higher grace, a multiplied grace. And now that you have started with the Lord, you will continue. I will continue. I got born again many years ago. And those many years ago, more than 50 years now, one day at a time, one problem at a time, one persecution at a time, and one storm at a time, here we are. I said, here we are. I have not been drowned. Your water will not drown you. That river will not drown you. Day after day, step after step, one event after the other, and you and I, you and I, where is it there? You and I, we will climb every mountain together. We will cross every sea together. We will jump every hurdle together. Or clear all the enemies together before us in Jesus' name. I was born again. 
at the age of 20, 20 what now? Don't worry, I'm a mathematician, I'll get it out. You see, I was born again at the age of 23. 23, then 24, 25, 30, 31, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. And I'm still going strong. I transferred that to you. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Get up, stand up, and say, Lord, I will never look back. A disciple, I am redeemed. I am saved, I am healed, I am delivered, and then in the strength of the Lord, I will continue, continue, continue to live. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. Great things are waiting you today.